I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. I tell you what, I am so excited to have you all here with us today. This is our first show. And uh, we're doing these little monthly specials. But in January, we're going to start up with weekly special or weekly episodes. So, But we're going to kick everything off with this these tales of of ghosts and murders, and it all surrounds the George Wythe House in Colonial Williamsburg. But before we get into the George Wythe House, let's go ahead and talk murder. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps already. Very excited. It was summer, 1806. The elderly gentleman sat down to breakfast in his Richmond, Virginia townhouse. His faithful servant was working in the kitchen. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed the man's grandnephew putting some white powder in a cup of steaming hot coffee. Minutes later, one of America's founding fathers lay writhing in excruciating pain on the floor. George Wythe the seventh person to sign his name to the Declaration of Independence didn't realize it yet, but he was already a dead man. Tonight, we must ask, is it George Wythe, whose spirit haunts the Wythe House in Williamsburg, Virginia, or is the house haunted at all? Now, I have a question for you. Concerning the murderer of George Wythe, you said it was his grandson? Uh, no, not his grandson. First of all, I think before we talk about his grandson, though, we should uh, let everybody know what happened with George with writhing in pain on the floor. The doctor arrived. Okay. And at that point, uh, with just begged him, absolutely begged him to put some leeches on his body. Now, do you have any idea why he would ask for such a thing? Well, number one, I think it's just crazy asking to have leeches put on your body, but was this for medical purposes? Absolutely. Back in the 1700s, leeching was a common medical practice. Uh, Do you know the theory behind that? Well, if uh, memory serves me correctly from high school history, uh, leeches were used to suck out the bad blood from the body so that the body could produce healthy blood. Wasn't that it? Exactly. That's exactly it. And of course, George Wythe firmly believed in that. But the doctor, although he believed in leeching, decided that George Wythe was a goner. He believed there was no hope for George. And so consequently, he was not about to waste his valuable leeches on a lost cause. So uh, a leeching did not occur. George Wythe did pass away. And a subsequent uh, autopsy revealed that he was indeed poisoned with arsenic, which, by the way, is a white powder. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so we go back to that statement by the house servant. She saw uh, George Wythe's grandnephew. This is a guy that... Grandnephew, okay. This is a guy who was George Wythe's sister's grandson. Okay. I have no idea why this guy's parents are not part of the story, but apparently the grandmother was raising him. He was probably what we would call today a juvenile delinquent, too much for the grandmother, and she contacted her brother, George Wythe, in hopes that he could raise the lad and turn him into something useful in society. In fact, uh, this uh, grandnephew was named after George Wythe. His name was George Wythe Sweeney. So he was even he was even named after uh, George With. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, can I ask what was the purpose of him um, murdering his uncle? Any uh, law enforcement officer will tell you that uh, when you have a murder, you usually have to look for some kind of motive, right? Of course. So we have to look to history again to find out what was going on shortly before George With was indeed murdered, and we find out that. He discovered his grandnephew, Sweeney, stealing books from his library. Now, why would he do that? Uh, That's my question. I mean, books are books. Uh, Mm -hmm. How valuable could a book be? Well, back then, I tell you what, uh, your personal library of books were absolute treasures. And, I mean, we didn't have the vast number of books published uh, that we do today. And so they were treasures. And, in fact, after George Wythe died, he willed his entire library of books to his 
student and dear friend Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson actually ended up with his books. But Sweeney was stealing the books uh, to pay off gambling debts. He was addicted to gambling among some of his other vices, and he, he was just apparently just no good. And so George Wythe had, had had it. He had done all he could for the lad. There was nothing more he could do. Uh, as far as he was concerned, stealing the books was the last straw, and so he let the uh, Sweeney know that he was going to be written out of George Wythe's will, Ooh. disinherited, get nothing, and shortly after that, George Wythe is poisoned. Wow. I'm. Those are some very extreme measures to go to. But, uh, I mean, even in today's time, we have situations like that where some family member will kill somebody off because, well, they got kicked out of the will. Exactly. Now, what happened to uh, Sweeney, you might ask? I'm and, dying to find out. Well, he didn't hang around uh, Williamsburg very long. He was brought to trial, by the way. Uh, he was tried for murder for his uh, for his uncle's murder. He, he, yes, his granduncle's murder, and uh, he was acquitted. So we really can't officially say today that George With Sweeney murdered George With. Now, why is this though? I mean, he was poisoned. There was a witness that said that they she saw him put the powder in his his drink or whatever it was. How did he get acquitted when they had a wit- uh, have a witness? All right, Uh, very simply this. The house servant said she saw George with Sweeney put the white powder in his his, um, grand-uncle's coffee. That would be a slam-dunk case just about anywhere. Eyewitness testimony. But not in Colonial Williamsburg, because back then, at that time, African-Americans could not testify in a court trial and the house servant was an african-american so consequently if you don't have a witness who can testify at court what kind of evidence do you have uh very little nothing so i mean they didn't have fingerprint evidence or anything like that at the time no csi so without uh yeah no csi is right so without that witness testimony uh, there was uh, no way to acquit uh, to uh, convict George with Sweeney. So he got away with it. Uh, in my mind, he did it. In the mind of historians, he did it. But legally, he was acquitted. He did uh, get some justice later on, however, because he found his way to Tennessee where he was caught stealing a horse. Mm. He was tried for that. He was convicted for that. And he did serve some jail time for that. So okay. he did end up uh, getting himself in jail. And then after that, he just totally drops out of history. And I think that's perfect justice because while he totally drops out of history george with his grand uncle will always remain at the top of our american revolutionary history for what he did absolutely now let's talk a little bit about george with's house in colonial williamsburg yes the place of the supposed haunting yes and so People will say, oh, yeah, if he was murdered there, uh, sure, that's probably a haunted story connected with it. But let me first remind you, Mm. George Wythe was murdered in his townhouse in Richmond, Virginia, not in the George Wythe house in Colonial Williamsburg. So he he wasn't even there when this happened. That's right. So he was not murdered in the George Wythe house. Well, what about the, isn't there a cemetery behind the house or near the house? Couldn't he have uh, he been buried at least in the family plot or something? No, George Wythe was uh, actually uh, buried in uh, St. John's Episcopal Church graveyard up there in Richmond. So Okay, so he's, he's tot- not even near the house, period. Totally out of the picture. And uh, like I say, the... The grandnephew uh, went off to Tennessee, so neither one of them are part of this geography for, you know, any kind of um, haunting legend. Now, that house, though, does have an incredible history. It was a gift to George Wythe and his bride from his father-in-law, and it is, Gary, it is a beautiful colonial mansion, two Mm. stories, beautiful colonial mansion. I've seen photos. Located on Palace Green right near the governor's palace, which was a palace, trust me. The right. royal governors lived in style at that time. And it's been beautifully restored by Colonial Williamsburg. And the nice thing is people can go 
to Williamsburg, Virginia. Anybody listening to this podcast can go to Williamsburg, Virginia, mm -hmm. and actually visit inside George With's house. They can uh, tour all of the rooms. They can walk up the staircase. They can go all to the second floor rooms. It's been beautifully restored, beautifully furnished. Uh, it is a true historic jewel. Mm. And a lot of these folks, though, may not realize that there are some haunted legends. Oh, that there are. Attached to the house. Yes. So my question then is... Do question. What, what uh, are the legends connected with the haunting and who may be haunting it if it's haunted? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because the uh, supposed spirit that... Uh, supposedly haunts the With House would happen to be the spirit of Lady Anne Skipwith. Now, there are a few stories that I've come across. Um, I'm going to share uh, one of them that I read um, and one of them that you actually told to me when I was much younger. Um, and we'll go into a little bit of your uh, experience of actually being there at the With House. Um, but the story revolves around a woman named Lady Anne Skipwith and her husband in a ball, all right? So apparently the, uh, the, the couple, the Skipwith couple, went to stay at George With's house and as guests, and they had been invited to the governor's mansion or the governor's palace for this big, lavish party. And so that night, they're at the party. They're having a, a good time. Can you hear that, folks? It's the actual party right there. They're having a good time at this party. And uh, so apparently, you know, her husband, Lady Skipwith's husband, says he has to step outside. And, but he's been gone for a while now. And so she goes looking for him, and she finds her hubby. He is outside in the back garden. But he is not alone, folks. No, he is with Lady Anne's sister. And her husband and sister are in warm embrace kissing in the back garden she is so upset so flustered by what she has seen folks she goes running out of the party she makes her way a past uh, out onto the for uh, the green running across the grass and along the way she loses one of her slippers so she's running one shoe on one shoe off and you can hear this very audible tap thump tap thump and she makes her way to the with house and she is going up the, you know, the walkway into the house. And once she gets inside of the house, she goes upstairs, finds a steamer trunk that has rope on it that had been used to keep it closed while they were traveling um, to the, on their way to the, to the ball. And she takes the rope off of the trunk, ties one end on the banister, and she puts the other end of the rope around her neck and, well... That's right, she hung herself in the house. Now, because of this, they believe that her spirit is now trapped inside of the George With house, and that anybody who goes to the house in the evening and waits outside, they will hear that tap-thump, tap-thump of Lady Anne Skipwith going up the stone walkway. And, and there have been numerous accounts of people hearing this. Uh, not only that, but there are reports that you can see a light that moves from the upstairs to the downstairs, this glow that goes through the window. And they, there have been a lot of people that have said that they have seen this. Okay. Now, the other version of the story that, uh, that I heard that, that you told me, I remember it very clearly, one Halloween, 1992, as I was dressed up as a Ninja Turtle. I remember very clearly how you uh, had retold the story about how... Um, in this version, she was scared by something, almost as if she had seen the devil herself. And she had left, run across the green to the house. When she got inside, she died, but of mysterious causes. And it had gone unknown, the reason for her death. So there are, there are a few tales that vary um, about the events that happened, but all agree that her spirit is trapped in the house and that you can hear her going up the walkway. Now... According to your research, because you did a little looking into this, there had been some question of whether or not Lady Anne Skipwith was a real person and whether or not anybody had actually committed suicide 
or died of mysterious causes inside of the George Wythe house. So based on what you found out, would you say this was a true story, or would you say that there's a little bit of stretching going on here? Well, with any legend, I think the first thing you do is to find out who was real and who was not. Of course. So let's look first at George Wythe. Uh, There's no question that this was a real person, and he did indeed live in the George Wythe house in uh, Colonial Williamsburg, back during the Revolutionary War times. He was a law professor at the College of William and Mary, and he had some very famous students, Thomas Jefferson being among them. Also, James Monroe, a future president, uh, John Marshall, the future uh, Supreme Court uh, Justice, Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, and uh, Henry Clay, a future famous senator. And back then, uh, you didn't just uh, deal with the students in a classroom at uh, William and Mary, you uh, frequently invited them uh, to your home for chats and seminars and discussions. And so Mm -hmm. we can, I think we can assume that uh, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe, John Marshall, Henry Clay, all of those famous people actually visited with George Wythe in the George Wythe house that's supposedly haunted. Okay. So George Wythe, check. He was a real person, existed in that house. But what about Lady Anne Skipwith? Was this a real person or was uh, uh, just a fictional person somebody made up? Well, when I was uh, there uh, checking out the house, I didn't believe there was any Lady Skipwith. In fact, I even checked over at the nearby Bruton Parish uh, graveyard to see if any uh, such person was buried there. And, of course, there's not. And so for the longest time, I didn't think there was any such person. However, I have conducted additional research many years later, and I have discovered that, by golly, there was a true Skipwith family that uh, existed at that time and place. Sir Peyton Skipwith lived in a, uh, on a beautiful plantation in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. He was a wealthy tobacco plantation owner. And his first wife, can you guess who, what her name was? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. Was it Lady Anne Skipwith? It sure was. Oh, boy. Okay, so Lady Anne Skipwith, check. She was a real person. Now, did she die in the house? That's the big question. All right. Well, let's uh, let's look a little bit uh, closer at uh, their situation so we can make that determination. So Sir Peyton, he's married to Lady Anne Skipwith. Uh, notice the sir in front of his name. That means that he had a royal title, and so... Of course. You would expect that he would be invited to all of the special occasions at the governor's palace in the Mm. colonial capital of the Virginia uh, colony. So he obviously, along with his wife, was in Williamsburg on special occasions. And it's not likely that he would stay at the Raleigh Tavern or some of those other places for the common folks. So it's most likely he stayed with a friend, another wealthy individual, such as George Wythe. So I have no doubt that Sir Peyton Skipwith and his wife, Lady Anne Skipwith, could well have stayed at the Wythe Mansion whenever they were in town for a special occasion. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit about that ball that you mentioned uh, her running out of. Most people, when they think of a royal governor's ball, they think it's, oh my gosh, gowns and all sorts of formal this and formal that. Oh, you can almost hear it. I can hear it. But you know what? Those balls, a lot of times, were anything but formal. They were raucous. They were rollicking. And I mean, the alcohol just flowed uh, from beginning to end. So we're talking about something that would be more like a college party right now. (laughs) Yeah, among the wealthy aristocrats of the colonies. Okay. A colony. But um, there could well have been a violent argument between the Skipwiths at the ball, especially when you're talking about a lot of alcohol being present, right? It of course. It could of course. easily have been some kind of altercation or argument. And she could well have, in frustration or anger or whatever, run across Palace Green back to the Wythe home where she and Pey- Sir Peyton were uh, staying. But I have to tell you, that's where the legend comes to a crashing halt. Okay. She did not commit suicide. All right. So Lady Anne Skipwith died in childbirth in 1779. And it's most likely that she was buried in the family graveyard at their Prestwald plantation 
over there in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. She's definitely not there in Williamsburg in the Bruton Parish graveyard. Uh, and she didn't die at the With House either. Now, here's where your legend picks up again. Sir Peyton did go on to marry Lady Anne's younger sister, Jean. Oh, so, well, to me, that sounds like there may have been some kind of relationship going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that so we can't discount that part of the legend, Gary. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, after uh, Lady Anne passed away in childbirth, Sir Peyton marries the younger sister, Jean, and, of course, she becomes the next Lady Skipwith. So could she be the Lady Skipwith of the legend? And my mm-hmm. answer to that is no. Oh. She died of old age in 1826, so there was no suicide there either. So even though we have all of this history and we've pretty much established that most of these people are real people, um, the events surrounding what may have actually happened the night of the governor's ball or what may have happened in the house, we can definitively say that as far as we know, it's just a story. Yes, it's a story that could well have some uh, information grounded in facts, but, um, you know, uh, if, if we were to try and identify who may be haunting the George With House, I think there is no answer to that available. However, mm. we can still ask the question, is the house haunted? Now, this is where you have a little bit more expertise in this situation than I myself, because you have actually been to the George With House. You have actually stayed up late to witness... Uh, eerie sounds or lights in the windows based on what you experienced tell us tell us exactly what happened well first of all let me say that uh, i do not believe in haunted houses so oh come on you don't believe a little (laughs) bit in haunted houses no no there's always some kind of rational worldly uh, explanation for things but i will tell you i have um, talked with someone um I did uh, meet up with a Colonial Williamsburg security officer who was totally freaked out about going into the uh, George With house uh, at night in the dark with just a flashlight. And that house, I mean, is so valuable. It's worth uh, multi-millions of dollars along with its history that there are even alarms uh, built into the floor where if you step Mm. on the floor, it will trigger the alarms. Oh, really? So pressure alarms even in the floors, and and, and the place is incredibly protected. And yet, this security officer said to me that this is the one place on his patrol route that made him extremely nervous. I said, well, why is that? And he said, you know, one night when I was mounting the stairs Mm -hmm. to check out the second floor, No lights on, just the flashlight. He said this incredibly chill wind just kind of blew past him. It wasn't the air conditioning. The Mm. windows weren't open. But he said, said, I just have no idea how to explain something like that. And, you know, if I tell anybody about it, people think I'm crazy. Oh, sure, of course. But he told me. And so I said to myself, well, how about if I go out there at the bewitching hour and check the place out. And that oh. is exactly what I did, Gary. Oh, buddy. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, between 11 o'clock at night and 1 o'clock in the morning, I planted myself on the little bench that's at the far end of the backyard underneath a trellis. Mm-hmm. And you can see the entire with house, the back of it, from that uh, perspective. Okay. And I sat on the bench and I watched and I watched and I watched. I have to tell you, I heard nothing. You didn't, you didn't hear the tap thump? No, no. And people were, had told me that that was something that you might experience. I, I heard nothing of the sort. So that did not occur while I was there. Well, what about the light? Did you see any lights in the window? Well, that I did. And that's what makes this, you know, part of this story. Um, at that time of night, uh, there's no traffic going around in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, at least not back then. It was a small, sleepy southern town. And uh, plus, there's no street really nearby because the colonial area is closed to vehicle traffic. So uh, you, you wouldn't be able to explain any lights uh, going on in, in, in that vicinity. Mm. And uh, so I think it was probably a little bit after midnight, and I did suddenly see a faint light, and my impression was, ah, that looks like a candle. 
Oh. And it appeared in the second story upper right window. Mm -hmm. And then it started to move slowly. And it moved over to the window above the doorway, the back door. Mm. Then it came down the stairs. And then it moved over to the right and uh, stopped at, I think, maybe the dining room or whatever on the bottom floor uh, to the right. And I said, what was that? And then it it went out. Yeah. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Now, I would love to believe that ghosts exist. Uh, You know, I'm I'm one of these people who are skeptical, but, uh, you know, it would be nice to, uh, to see something. Um, but I, I kind of, I, I follow you on the, the realm of that things can often be explained. What's to say that that wasn't a, a flashlight? I mean, you said that there's a security guard in the building. It's clearly a multi-million dollar piece of property that's, you know, it's been converted into a museum now. How do you know it wasn't one of the guards just doing a nighttime patrol? Well, I can't totally rule that out. But uh, if it were one of the guards, my question would be, why did he just enter the front door, uh, view the building, and then leave? Why didn't he come to the backyard and check the backyard uh, area to see if there were any intruders or people such as myself loitering around? And, uh, of course, nothing of the sort happened. So the whole time that you were there... I didn't see a single You didn't see a single being. person, even though you were loitering in the back I didn't yard. see a single human being. I was the only human around isn't that something <laughs> wow okay well i mean that that kind of says a, a lot right there and i you know i guess to um again uh flip-flopping around here but uh i mean the fact that the man felt something move past him on the stairwell the guard um and you're saying that uh, there are sensors in in that building that would detect movement in areas that he may not have been um that kind of uh creates a, an eerie situation right there Yes, and I will say this. If any of you folks who are listening to this um, podcast this evening, if you ever have the chance to visit Williamsburg, Virginia, Colonial Williamsburg, Mm. be sure to visit this beautiful colonial mansion because you will appreciate it for its history and for the antiques that furnish it. And let me tell you something. Uh, You'll be in the house of a person who wasn't originally... Uh, designated to go to the Second Continental Congress. George Washington was, but George Washington was named Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army and had to resign his position with the Second Continental Congress, and George Wythe was designated to take George Washington's place. Mm. And that is why George Washington's name is not on the Declaration of Independence, but George Wythe's is Mm -hmm. because George Wythe went to that Second uh, Continental Congress where they signed the Declaration of Independence. So if you go into that house, that is the kind of person whose home it was at the time of the American Revolution. And that alone should give you chill bumps, Mm -hmm. despite anything uh, that, you know, we say um, haunted wise. And I will say this too, in October, Colonial Williamsburg does have haunted tours and perhaps the With House is on their uh, haunted tour where they may tell this legend or one similar to it. One that we may not be aware of. Exactly. Either way, you could have your own paranormal experience uh, right there in Colonial Williamsburg at the With House, which I think is exciting. Now, that being said, I just want to thank everybody for staying with us and listening to these stories. Um, We hope that you enjoyed them. And if you did enjoy them, please join us again next month, uh, November. We're going to have another uh, special story. And then, like I said, in January, the new year, 2021, we will be having weekly stories and stories that I guarantee you will blow your mind. So once again, I'm Richard. And I am Gary. These were our incredible stories. And if you have just discovered us, uh, or if you're going to share it with your friend, tell them to look for us on any platform that may carry their favorite podcast and go ahead and add us to your list. Thanks again.